Hello everybody, if you remember in the previous video I analyzed this block diagram structure using root text technique. In the previous video we assumed that kn is equal to 0, okay, so it was equal to 0, which technically cancels the loop, and we analyzed root locus with respect to change in k out, and we know that k out is greater than 0, okay. So it was a simple problem because uh, it was given in the standard form, because k out is a proportional gain, we have an open trust of function, and it is a simple unit feedback loop. It is uh, relatively easy to analyze uh, from the perspective of root dogs. But however, let's assume that. Now, k out, let's change the color also, okay, is equal to 1, okay, and we want to analyze the uh, root locus of the closed loop system with respect to change in kn, and of course, as you can see, it's not in the standard form. So what we need to do is we need to somehow uh, formulate the problem uh, in a way that we put in a standard form and such that we can draw root locus with respect change in kn. Okay. So what we need to do is we first need to derive the closed loop transfer function. So for this problem, the closed loop transfer function is equal to this k out. We know that k out is equal to one. Okay. This is equal to one s square plus k in s plus okay k in plus k out minus one okay so k out is equal to one so it is equal to one so technically this is equal to simply k in plus k in okay so now we have a single gain okay and let's uh, simplify this instead of just writing k in just write k okay so and this is just k and we want to draw the root locus of the closed loop system with respect to k, and k is the gain here. Okay, so how we can do that? As you can see, it is not in standard form. But first of all, let's write that d of s is equal to s square plus k s plus k. Remember, uh, in the root locus, what we uh, analyze is uh, fundamentally, uh, we analyze the behavior of this function, g o l s times k is equal to zero okay so we analyze the s's that satisfy this equation this is the fundamental equation and technically the s that satisfy this equation is technically uh, equal to the uh, d of s is equal to zero because it's the polynomial when s satisfies the s of equal to zero it's a root of the system so what i need to do is i need to convert this equality into this which is very simple Okay, so let's write it here. Okay, instead of this, what I do is this. S square plus k times s plus 1. Equating this equal to 0 is equal to equating 1 plus k times s plus 1. S square is equal to 0. So I have the same function. Okay, the s that satisfies this equation, which is as you can see in the standard form of the root locus is equal to the s that satisfies the s f equal to zero which is the closed loop locus of the system okay from the perspective as you can see it's very easy such that okay one plus one plus k times s plus one divided by s squared is equal to zero and now this is my okay g o l bar okay so it's like you can think as a fictitious open transfer function and if i draw the root locus of this transfer function okay it will be the root locus of this whole closed loop system with respect to k in of course k out is equal to one uh, in this problem okay let's do that uh, together okay that's nice so, in this open loop transfer function, we have two poles. Let's change the color. Okay. And they are both located at the origin. Okay. So, if it's a double pole, uh, so it says that uh, the root of starts from the poles and goes to zeros. So, at k is equal to zero, okay, uh, the system uh, acts like a double integrator. And uh, this is something that we already found in the previous video. And a uh, double integrator is an unstable system. Okay, and we have a zero at uh, minus one. Okay, let's call it here. This is minus one. Okay, now let's draw the root dogs. Okay, so let's start with the real part. So this part is not in the root dogs, it's obvious. 
Okay. So if I do, uh, look at this part, I have two poles on the right. So it's also not in the root locus. Okay, that's great. And if I look at this part, this section, it's in root locus because I have one, two, three total zeros and poles. So technically, the part that goes to minus infinity, starts from minus one, is on the root locus. Uh, this is the only part that's on the root locus. Okay. That's great. So, as you know, okay, before going into odd rules, it's kind of relatively easy to get the basic structure. So, we, I have two poles, okay? And one of them will go to minus one, and one of them will go to minus infinity. It's obvious because, uh, as you can see, I have n minus m, which is equal to one number of asymptotes. Since I have only one asymptote, this asymptote should go to minus infinity. Okay, that's great. So this is going to this direction, this is going in this direction, which means that this that will be complex conjugate pair like this. Okay. This is going this, this okay. So we need to find a okay, let's change the color again. Breakaway or breaking point uh, somewhere between minus infinity and minus one. Okay, so as you can see, we obtain the whole quantum structure. Uh, what we can do is we can analyze specific points. In general, if there's a breaking break point, we want you to uh, compute the uh, value of this uh, point and the gain that satisfies this specific point. And these points are important because since it's on the stable region, it technically corresponds to critical stable point, which is technically no or should and best setting time uh, value. Okay, so how do we compute that? If you remember, we have g all of s. Okay, we can take its derivative, uh, or we can take the derivative of one of g all of s equated to zero. Okay, let's do that. Uh, let's take the derivative of uh, this derivative of one over g o l s. Okay, that's great. So let's do that. Okay, so if I take the derivative, so it is equal to 2s s plus 1 minus s square. There's something here. I think it's equal to s plus 1 square. The bottom power is important and it should be equal to 0 at the breakaway and breaking points. Okay, so I don't know at this part. I need to equate that. So it is equal to s times, I guess, okay, s plus 2 is equal to 0. This equation is equal to 0 for s equal to 0 and s equal to minus 2. So what is s equal to 0? As you can see, it's obvious and breakaway point because I have a double root. Okay, here it's a technically breakaway point, but it's not an important breakaway point. And the second breakaway point occurs when s equal to minus 2. Okay, so we compute it to minus 2. Okay, so if I want you to answer a question such that, for example, what is the uh, point okay where uh, the best setting time occurs without any overshoot it's this point because it's a critical damp point so before this point we have a complex conjugate pair so if there's an overshoot and after this point i have a pole here okay so i have a pole here and i have a pole here and a closer pole to the origin uh, has a worse or like larger setting time it speed is slow Okay, so uh, the next question is, so what about the gain at this point? It's very easy. Okay, so if you remember the formulas, okay, the k is equal to 1 over the magnitude of g o l minus 2. Okay, so if I uh, plug in this, I will find that k is equal to 4. So technically, the point is associated with k in is equal to 4. Okay, so if I limit my k out to 1, okay, it's a specific k in, okay, and if I move k in to 4, I obtain the best behavior in terms of if I want no overshoot and the best setting time value. Okay, so let's assume that I want a different point, okay, uh, and I want to be my setting time to be 4 seconds, okay, so for second, for 2% setting time. So what I need to do is, okay, so for 
Second sampling time, if you remember, it is associated with sigma is equal to 1. Okay, because it's 4 over sigma c. So my pole should have a real part of 1. And as you can see, it happens here. Okay, and as you can see, I know that it's on the root locus. Okay, so what I can do that, okay, so I know that it's complex conjugate. Uh, I know that this pole is located at minus 1 plus omega dj, and it should be on root locus. I plug on the I transfer function, try to find omega d, and technically, if I do that, I can find omega d, then I can find k, and technically uh, find the pole and gain pair that satisfies this equation. Okay, so uh, this is a good example where uh, we want to draw a root locus that's not in a standard form. Okay, and it generally happens if your gate or parameter is not uh, at the output of the error function. If there's like cascaded loops or your parameter can be inside of one of the transfer functions, it may can be in a non trivial form. But as you can see, if you are like taking the manipulate the transfer function in a smart way, as you can see, you can easily draw the root locus with respect to any parameter.